So yeah, we are rushing a little bit today. Um, I want to take you on a like a thought experiment about software being a resource of our current societies and what we can do to have this resource sustainable and available for future generations. So let's start with the resource part. Um, software is a resource of our current society in basically everything we are doing from communication to transportation to organization, basically everything we are doing, software and hardware is involved. And uh, there are some differences, uh, especially to natural resources, if you think about software as a resource, about digital resources. The most obvious is it's in theory unlimited. So every human on the planet can have access to the same resource and uh, I can use and reuse and share it as many times as I want and uh, still the resource is available. Also, the, um, it's basically the more I'm using the resource, so the more users I have of the resource, the more resource I have in the end, the more amount of the resource I have. So if I have, in comparison to a natural resource, if I have a forest, normally the more users I have from the forest, at some point the forest will be gone. But if I think about the software, if I think about one installation being one unit of the resource, the more installations I have, the more units I have, the more resource I have available. So in theory it's unlimited, but in practice it's often limited. This is for example, for legal issues, this is for copyright, for patents. There's also technical measurements taken to limit the resource, DRM, and other copy restrictions. This is here shown with the red uh, traffic signs. I have the black traffic signs also to highlight the resource can also be damaged. So there could be a bug, for example, and the resource will not work anymore which is also a little bit different to a natural resource. What else is different? The resource can be designed in a way, so especially the authors, they have uh, possibilities using a license about, um, yeah, they have the ability to decide how available this resource will be. Here's, I show from copy left to copy right, including of course also CC0, I can decide about the availability of the resource. What else is different? The resource comes in dependencies. We see here um, different GNU Linux distributions there and their forks. So basically every fork has some dependency on its mother, but also if you think on different layers, basically every GNU Linux distribution has a dependency on the Linux kernel. So to sum up this part, what I want to take for the next part about the sustainability is the more users I have, um, the more resources I have. Resources can be designed so I can take decisions about the availability of the resource and these resources depend on each other. Now talking about sustainability, there are a lot of different definitions out there about um, what is sustainable, what is sustainability. I use now here the one from the United Nations uh, written down in the Brundtland report that says sustainability is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Thinking about natural resources, normally this shall this means so we should consume nowadays in a way that there is something left for the future generations from this resource. In, as we were saying, that is vice versa with the digital resources, we basically have to prevent that the last installation will be deleted or gone or something because the more installations I have, the more resource. So I have to prevent basically deleting the last installation. So in a modern way, we could also say 
everything not saved will be lost. How can I lose software? We were all, I was already saying this, so the, of course I can delete the last installation, then the software is gone basically. Also a very common threat is the, the threat of proprietary software, so I have uh, closed sources, I cannot see the code, the company behind goes bankrupt, the knowledge behind goes lost, no one is able anymore to read the code and maybe cannot run it anymore, so this is also a threat model here. And uh, the magnet here basically is to symbolize uh, also there can be informational attacks, technical attacks, virus, other things that makes my software not runnable anymore. To prevent this kind of loss, there's already a great initiative. It's called the Software Heritage. They basically, I mean, they, their mission, our ambition is to collect, preserve, and share all software that is publicly available in source code form. So basically what they do is they look for public available uh, source code, they make backups of it. So to preserve this for the future. And what we should take here from is, or what we can already see is that the public availability is very crucial to, to, to safeguard this for the future and to not have any legal or technical problems doing that. Okay, this is one solution to keep it for the future. Then we can maybe get the code back but one day we have lost it. Uh, but even more preferable would be to keep it alive because, and here comes the point um, with the last installation, the one struggle or one big problem for a software is the underuse of software. So while natural resources have the problem to get overused, Digital resource, a big threat is the underuse of it. And this is the part where the, where the people come in. So software is made, is still made by people and is made for people. And um, as long as we have people who are of interest in the resource, the resource will be maintained. It will be, um, it will be tailored for the future and community is not just as we maybe typically think about the users or the developers, it's much more, it's much wider. There's also companies using the resource. There are third parties using the resource and other, all kinds of organization using the same resource. And uh, they have an interest in keeping this alive. So if I think, for example, I take WordPress, then I have users who use WordPress for their blog. Then I have developers who like to create add-ons for WordPress or uh, develop WordPress itself. Then I have companies, they sell installations of WordPress for users to use. And I have third parties who basically who maybe sell web space and as an additional service on top, they sell uh, WordPress installations and so on and so on. All of them have the interest that WordPress stays alive, that WordPress goes on with the time, with the switch from HTML4 to HTML5, from desktop to mobile platforms, they have a high interest in, in WordPress being able to go with the time because they have invested so much effort, they have a lot of data in it, and uh, so they care about the resource being able to challenge the future. And these communities, they can be governed so this is mainly true, I mean, from a, let's say from the owner's point of view, this is mainly true for the users and the developers because for third parties, you might not have a lot of influence on them. But for the users and developers, you can have. So there are different things you can, measurements you can take. A common goal, for example, is, is very helpful for the different parties to align with, like we want to produce the best free, uh, CMS system out there or something like this. You can create knowledge exchange between the different parties. You can have, for example, conferences, mailing lists, documentations, things like this. Social exchange, um, you have mentorships, you have a code of conduct, you invite new generations to join your ongoing project and keep it alive. 
And again, at the very core, here is the free licensing model because this is the the free licensing allows you to allows everyone to participate, to create, to to share knowledge, to uh, use it, and yeah, to get the thing rolling on. There's one more point I want to make here. This is uh, about forking. So forking is on one hand a threat to sustainability because it breaks an ongoing development at some point. And on the other hand, it can also be positive. That depends a little bit um, what the main branch is basically doing. I want to have more a look from the technical point of view. And uh, so, yeah, because not every fork is the same. The, and uh, so this is basically maybe the, 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 the fork you, you are looking for. So you have a, a parallel branch and you exchange code and knowledge with each other. So you do not have so many redundant efforts. Uh, in practice, this normally looks like this. So you have a main branch and you have a, maybe a specialized branch bringing your software on another platform, for example. I mean, this is also, of course, a lot of forks are more technical reasons. What you want to avoid is the privatization of a branch because in this case, they take basically your code and efforts, they privatize it, and then you get again into the problem that we have discussed before with the proprietary software. If the organization behind this privatized branch then goes bankrupt or loses its knowledge to by some way, the knowledge again will be lost. So this is unsustainable. That's where, so to keep your basically, to have your, to keep your sustainability and keep your knowledge available for the future generations, even with the threat of forking, this is where the copyleft license helps you to keep the knowledge available publicly. So from this part, I would uh, take the following uh, out of it. So the free licenses are fundamental for software sustainability. We see this from, soft, from software heritage, from archiving software. This is uh, fundamental to archive it without any limitations, but also for the communities to work with your software, to work with the documentation. I mean, it's not just only about the code, it's also about everything surrounding the software because it's not only code, the software. So, but only free license allow them basically to, to make the most out of it. Community governance, uh, I mean, communities are in the core of keeping software alive and by this making it sustainable and available for future generations. So community governance is very helpful for keeping a project alive. And uh, due to the always present threat of forking, a copyleft license helps you at least to, even if your project gets forked and, uh, and your project may be damaged or something, I mean, from the organizational point of view, to keep your knowledge alive, copyleft helps you with sustainability. So much my thoughts now. In time. <laughs>